Hi, welcome to a vinyasa style flow. My name is Kaylee. Today we're going to focus a little bit on uh, a pose called Chakrasana, which is wheel pose. Chakra, if you've heard of the chakra system, is a Sanskrit word that means wheel. You can think of it as like a spinning kind of disc of energy or a vortex. I sometimes think of it as like a little whirlpool, almost an energetic whirlpool. And so the pose, the wheel pose that we'll do, uh, that we might do, we'll try a lot of different variations of wheel. We'll try and open up the chest and strengthen the shoulders a little bit to prepare before we get into it. But let's just start the practice. Go ahead and lay all the way down onto your back and we'll see how it rolls out. So let yourself kind of just flop down like it's the end of a long day. Find a position that feels pretty satisfying for your body here. If laying flat on your back isn't it, choose something else. You can always bend your knees. You can always um, lie on your side or on your belly or come to a seat or child's pose. So many choices, right? So settle in on something, trust yourself, and then let your body just melt for a few breaths before we get going. Reach your arms back up over your head. You can interlace your fingers and press the palms away from you. Take a big breath in. You might zip up your legs. And then when you're ready, let it out. Bring your knees to a tabletop position. Bring your arms to a goalpost or to a T. And then let's just drop the knees to the right. Find a spinal twist. You can absolutely straighten your right leg out underneath you or cross your left knee on top of your right knee. Just find some variation of a twisting shape. It might feel good to keep your nose pointing straight upward or it may feel nice to nod your chin gently toward your left shoulder. And see if you can start to connect a little bit more deliberately with your breath here. It's not to say that the breath gets really fast or forced in any way. Let's see if you can pull your inhales a little bit lower into the belly, maybe down to the lower back or the left hip. And let your exhales help create a sense of heaviness through your shoulders. Bring your head back through center if you nodded it to either side. And then bring your knees back through center. Pause in the middle for a moment. Maybe windshield wiper your knees side to side. Just let your lower back reset. When you're ready, take your twist to the left. So again, any version of that spinal twist. Two more nice long cycles of breath here. Breathing in, letting the breath stretch down toward the tailbone even. And exhaling, allowing your shoulders to melt underneath you on the mat. And one more here, big breath in. And then let it out. Draw the knees back through center. Now hold up the caps of your knees with the palms of your hands and then circle your knees a couple times away from one another. So I'm going to circle my right knee clockwise, left knee counterclockwise, let the tailbone tuck and untuck. Switch the direction of those knee circles and if this palm to kneecap thing just feels kind of fussy, feel free to move around in the lower back in any way that feels good. All right, set your feet down about hips distance apart underneath your knees, and then press your palms into the mat by your side. You might even bring your hands off the mat to the side. We wanna to start to activate the back. So keep the hips down to start, but push your palms down, keep the back of the head down. See if you can find some muscles, not so much in your neck, but in the sides of your back around your ribs. Good, relax the arms, relax that pressure. Now we're gonna push the feet down, tuck the tailbone, try and lead with your hips here as you lift the hips up, push your hands down so that you're using your arms as well as your legs to lift here into your bridge. 
Send your knees toward the top of the mat or the front of your space as you draw your chest back toward your chin. Take a breath in and then slowly lower all the way back down. Sweep your arms up over your head. Long inhale. And then exhale, palms to your side, lift your hips. Give your glutes a little squeeze. Try and lead with your hips instead of with your waist or your lower back. Lower the hips, sweep the arms back over your head, breathe in. And then again, exhale, arms to your side, lift your hips, push your feet to the mat. Two more times, lower your hips, reach your arms back on an in-breath. Lift your hips, palms, palms press into the floor on your exhale. Last time here, breathe in. And breathe out. Lower the hips down, draw your knees into your chest. Start to rock forward and backward along the length of your spine. You might tuck your chin toward your chest, find your balance for a moment on your sit bones. When you're ready, find Navasana. You can keep hold of the backs of the legs here if you'd like. I'm gonna actually suggest that you reach your arms out in front of you and then let's circle through the wrists. See if you can make these circles really, really smooth. So slow it down a little bit. We wanna wake up every little part of the wrist. If and when we do come into bridge, but certain, or wheel rather, but certainly when we're in plank, you're gonna be using the wrist. Switch the direction of those wrist circles. And then press the palms away from you. Interlace your fingers, press the palms away from you here. Sweep that palm press up over your head. Maybe you start to straighten out the legs. Low bow, getting right into it today. Breathe in. High bow on the exhale. You can release this bind if you want. Inhale two more times. Take it low. Exhale, lift up. High little squeeze. Last one like this. Breathe in. Exhale, lift it up. Ooh, hold. Cross the ankles. Plant the hands. And then find your downward facing dog. In down dog, it might feel good to pedal out your knees a little bit, check in with your ankles, maybe give your head a gentle shake or nod. And shift forward to the top of a push up. Take a big breath in as you tip forward onto your tippy, tippy, tippy toes, and then lower all the way down to your chest here. Come on to the tops of the feet. So we're setting up for Cobra, but go ahead and float the arms by your side with the elbows bent. Lengthen through the sides of the neck. So your neck is neutral, but you're lifting your head, you're lifting your chest, and then start to pulse the arms. Just a little pulse. Pulse the elbows back toward each other. We want to really warm up the space between the shoulder blades here. Press the hips downward. Give the glutes a little squeeze. Just here for five. Four, keep breathing. Three, two, big breath in, and then child's pose as you exhale. Send your hips to your heels. You can stay here, maybe nod the head side to side to massage across your forehead, your brow center. Relaxing any tension in your neck, let go of any clenching in your jaw. And then shift forward to cow pose. We'll come on to the palms of the hands and then tuck the toes under. So we're already warming up the plantar fascia, the soles of the feet. Tailbone is lifting, chest pulls through the arms. Broaden out through your collarbones here as you breathe in. And then cat pose, really zip up from the pubic bone toward the belly button, tuck the floating ribs in. Back to cow, tilt your tailbone up, lift the chest, lift the chin, breathe in. And then cat as you exhale, find your arch, let your shoulders drift toward your ears. Once more like that, big breath in. Big breath out. Find a neutral spine with toes tucked under. And then downward facing dog, lift the knees, lift the hips. From down dog, let's take the right leg back behind on an in breath and then bend your right knee externally opening through the hip. You can stay here or find some movement with your top knee or your top ankle. Sometimes it feels good to draw those circles, those wheels in the body. Find those spirals of energy in the joint spaces. 
switch direction of the circles if you're making them. Trying to kick right leg back, take a breath in, and then bring your right knee underneath your right hip. Find a side plank variation as you kick that left leg back behind you, left arm lifts up. I like to turn my right toes back behind the mat a little bit as opposed to bringing them into line with your left heel because it's just a little easier to balance this way. You can stay here or if you feel ready, float your left leg up. You can stay here or if you'd like to start working into those back bending shapes, reach the left hand back, catching the left foot or ankle. See if you can twirl your chest toward the left side of your space or even toward the ceiling. If you caught the left foot, go ahead and release the left foot. Bring the left foot all the way down to the back of your mat. Push into your right hand. So we're back into that side plank duration. Start to bend your left elbow and then twirl your heart up toward the ceiling. Slide your right shoulder underneath you a little bit more. Breathe in. And then child's pose as you exhale. Send your hips to your heels. The right wrist might be talking to you. You can turn the right palm upward. Maybe let the fingers curl. And take one long breath in. Breathe into anywhere where you feel like you picked up tension. And then let it out. And back to hands and knees. Toes tuck on an in-breath. Down dog on the exhale. This time, left leg is going to lift, put a bend in your left knee, and then find some movement with the knee or the ankle if you like. And some days it feels good to stay still and just to kind of breathe the movement into the body. Other days, there's kind of more of like an active inkling that the body wants to move in a certain way. So go with your intuition, go with your gut. You can always switch it up and experiment. Take your left leg long, take a breath in. Left knee underneath your left hip, side plank variation over here. And stay right here, find space in your chest, try to lengthen your spine, or if you want, you float the right leg up. And stay there, or reach back with your right hand and catch the right foot. If you catch the right foot, make sure you're pressing firm into the bottom hand. And then let your chest spin open toward the right side of your space or maybe even toward the ceiling. If you caught your foot, go ahead and release it. Take it back to that side plank variation. Left hand is anchoring you down. You're going to start to bend the right elbow. Pull that right shoulder blade onto the back of your ribs as you twirl your chest up and open. Breathe in. And then child's pose. Send your hips to your heels. This time... Take just one nice deep round of breath in through the nose. You can exhale through the nose or the mouth. Slide forward, hands and knees, tuck the toes under on the in breath. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Let's take a walk to the top of the mat, finding ragdoll. Separate your feet to at least hips distance. Catch the crooks of your opposite elbows. Find a little sway here, perhaps by shifting your weight from foot to foot. See if you can let go a little bit, let go of some of the control, let go of some of the rigidity. It's totally okay to have that control and rigidity at certain points, but we want to be able to shift into a space that's a little bit, a little bit more fluid, a little bit more easy, perhaps. Release the fingertips down, heel to your feet a bit closer together so the big toes come to touching. Slide your palms to your shins, find a halfway stretch. See if you can knit the shoulder blades together on your back. You might even wing the arms by your side to help you do that. Big breath in. Forward fold, catch your calves, tuck your chin toward your chest as you breathe out. Slowly unroll all the way up to standing. You can keep the knees soft. Sweep the arms over your head as you breathe in. Bend your elbows to your sides, cactus or goalpost shape. Breathe out. Reach your arms up again. Inhale. Do that two more times. Exhale, active through your shoulders. Keep lifting through your chest. Floating ribs are tucked. One more. Breathe in. 
Breathe out long through the sides of the neck. Reach your arms up on an in-breath, and then this time full of prayer right to your heart. Let your eyes soften to the tips of your fingers or close with your hands at your heart space. Pause for a moment. Decide that this practice is going to be a friendly place for you to bring your body, for you to bring your mind. So we're never going to push anything, but we're certainly, if we're feeling up to it, going to challenge ourselves, maybe a little bit of that playful competition even. And trust that you can take care of yourself in any way that you need here. So take what you need, soak it up, and let go of anything that doesn't resonate. Big breath in through your nose. Open your mouth, let it go. Blink your eyes open if they're closed. Reach up on an in-breath. Forward fold, hinge your hips, touch your calves, tuck your chin, exhale. Halfway stretch, breathe in. Plant the hands, step back to high push up, rock forward, lower half or all the way down. Cobra or upward facing dog. Finish your breath in, roll the shoulders down your back. And then downward facing dog on your exhale, send your hips back. Stay here, take one full breath in. And a nice, long, smooth breath out. Hold the breath out of your lungs. Look forward. Take a big step or a bunch of little ones to the top. Find a halfway stretch. This is where we breathe in. Fold forward. Squeeze the air from your lungs. Rise all the way up on the in-breath. Cactus your elbows on the exhale. Interlace your hands at your lower back. little bend in your knees as you lift your heart and breathe in. And then hinge forward with that bind as you breathe out. Release the bind. Find a halfway stretch on an in-breath. Plant your hands. Step back high plank to low plank as you empty. Cobra or up dog. Breathe in. Soak it up. Downward facing dog. Empty it out. Take one breath in. One breath out. Hold the exhale. Look forward. Step walk or hop between your thumbs. Halfway stretch, breath in. Chest to thighs, exhale. Rise tall on an in breath. Cactus elbows, exhale. Interlace at the lower back, breathe in. And then bow forward, empty out. Release the bind, fill up. Plant the hands, step or hop it back to low cushion. Cobra or up dog. Think of this as prep for your wheel. Breathe into it. Downward facing dog. Empty it out. From down dog, right leg is going to lift. Maybe you put a bend in your right knee. Maybe not. We're going to step that right foot through between the thumbs. Keep the left heel lifted. Reach your right arm up and open. So you're going to drag and fly twist here. Press into your left hand. Find some space across your chest here. Right palm is going to face the right side of your space and then pull that right shoulder blade back behind you. You might even bend the elbow a little bit. Take a big breath in. We're going to bring right elbow underneath your body, root down for your right foot, bring your left knee to your right elbow. Come back to dragonfly and twist. Nice big inhale. Do that two more times, right elbow, left knee, exhale. Inhale, dragonfly. Exhale, elbow to knee. Find dragonfly twist, take a breath in. And then cross a Rita, take a quarter of a turn, and then start to tap opposite ankle. Just give a little sway here. If this isn't for you, you can catch the crooks of your elbows and find a little ragdoll sway, or you can take a still version of this shape. We're just here for three, two, one. Sweep your hands to the top of the mat, pivot the toes forward. High crescent lunge, nice big breath in as you reach up. And then open arm crescent toward the right side of your space. See if you can draw your chest over your hips. So a lot of the time we find ourselves leaning forward here. So you can sweep it back a little bit as if that 
right hand that's back behind you is kind of winning in a tug of war. And then we're gonna keep the chest still, but start to sweep the arms side to side. Brace through your abdominals. So your arms are gonna to start to pull the body side to side. And your job from your feet through your core is to try and keep yourself stable and still. We wanna loosen up some of the connective tissue in the back. So it can get kind of sticky around the shoulders and the back of the ribs. I'm just working to loosen that up. And the next time your left arm is forward, sweep it all the way up, right hand comes back toward the left leg or toward your lower back. And stay here, breathe in. And then circle your hands to the top of the mat, step back high to low plank. Cobra or upward dog, breathing in. Downward facing dog, press it back. Left leg lifts on an in breath. Bring your left foot forward and then find your dragonfly twist over here. Get strong through that back leg and find length in your spine. So knowing that we're going to be doing that knee to elbow business, I'm gonna adjust and bring that left foot just a little further over to the left. Maybe the right hand comes a little bit further over to the right. And then I'm gonna send my right shoulder still on top of that right wrist. When you're ready, breathe in. Left elbow, right knee, squeeze. Inhale, back to dragonfly. Exhale, elbow to knee. Again, breathe in. Big breath out. Inhale, open to dragonfly. Prasarita, pivot your toes. Option to find your ragdoll arms, give your head a gentle shake, or to take that alternate little tap. See if you're moving, if you can let it be really pretty easy. So instead of forcing it, just let momentum kind of help you out here. Let gravity help decompress those joints in the back of the neck for three, for two, one, sweep it to the top of the mat, finding your high crescent lunge, root down through the balls of your feet. Your front foot is fully planted. You're really up high on the back to be toes. When you're ready, open your arms, twist to the left. Work to stack your shoulders back over your hips. And then before we start to swing the arms, push into your feet. Squeeze the inner thighs toward each other. Squeeze the outer hips together. Core pulls in, belly buttons pulling toward the lower back. And then start to swing the arms side to side. You can turn the palms to face downward. Get a little bit more rotation through the ribs even. Keep taking those big breaths in and out. It might look a little bit silly. I promise that this has a purpose in terms of opening up the space in your shoulders and loosening up some of that sticky connective tissue around the thoracic spine. All right, right arm's gonna stay high, left arm comes low, finding your revolved crescent twist, big breath into it. Circle your hands, step back high to low push-up. Cobra or up dog, breathe in, roll the shoulders down. And then child's pose, send your hips back toward your heels. From child's pose, start to walk your hands back toward your knees until you find a seated position. We're gonna reach the arms up so you're sitting up nice and tall and then pulse the arms back in space without arching your spine a ton. So take your arms into more of a Y shape here with me. You can also bend your elbows a little bit here. Three, two, one, release the arms down. Tuck your chin toward your chest. Press your lower back back. So you're rounding your spine here, belly button pulling in. And then lift it back up. Again, pulse for three, two, one. Hands down, round your spine. Option now to push into your palms and lift your knees. We're stretching out the fronts of the, fronts of the feet and shins. Drop the knees, last time like this. Arms up, pulse three, two, one, hands down, maybe the knees pop up for three, two, one, lower your knees, come to standing on your knees here. Hands are gonna come to your lower back, 
feet or maybe about hips distance apart back behind you, knees or hips distance apart. And then hug your hands up against the very um, top of your hips. Try and lead with your hips. So send your hips forward and then lift the shoulders up, take a breath in. As you exhale, roll the shoulders down your back. Keep sending your pelvis forward, your pubic bone forward, lifting your chest up. So we're in a supported camel variation here. Big, deep in breath. Slowly come back up to center. Send your hips to your heels. Turn your palms to face up on your thighs. Let your eyes close. Breathe in. Breathe out. Link the eyes open. We're going to put that little sequence together. Arms up, pulse for three, two, one. Palms down, lift the knees. Maybe you pulse the knees for three, two, one. Lower the knees, stand on your knees, hands to your low back. Tuck the tailbone, send the hips forward. Camel pose, breathing. It might feel accessible to bring your hands to your heels. For me, my body's not quite interested in that yet. See if you can breathe right into the space where your ribs knit together. And then guide your hips to your heels. Palms face up on your thighs. Close your eyes down. Find some length in your spine. So if you could sit up a little taller, reach the crown of the head toward the ceiling, let the shoulders melt down behind you. One more breath here. Open mouth, exhale. Blink your eyes open, back to downward facing dog. From down dog, when you're ready, take a big step or a bunch of little ones to the top of your mat. Straight into that halfway stretch here, breathe in. Forward fold as you breathe out. All the way up to standing, nice long inhale here. Bend your elbows, squeeze your thighs together as you exhale. Interlace your hands at your lower back, take a breath in. With that bind, fold forward, chest to thighs, chin to chest. Release your bind, find your halfway stretch on an in-breath. Plant the hand, step or hop it back through your vinyasa. Think of cobra or up dog as prep for your back bends. It's a back bend, breathe into it. And then downward facing dog, maybe not even prep. It is a back bend, right? Right leg lifts, take a breath in and then bend your right knee, stay here or go ahead and flip your dog. If you flip your dog, see if you can shift your shoulders forward a little bit so that they're stacking over that bottom left wrist, pulling that left shoulder blade onto the back of your ribs. Great, breathe in. Exhale, right hand comes back down, right leg goes all the way up on the in breath. Step between the thumbs as you exhale, drag and fly twist, breathe in. Right elbow, left knee, three times, little squeeze. Inhale, open. You can skip the reps, exhale, squeeze, and either hold drag and fly or that balance. Breath in. Last time, breath out. Inhale, peel it open. This time, find a Shiva squat by tenting your fingers on either side of your right foot and bringing that left knee to your right path. From Shiva squat here. We're gonna rise up to a single legged mountain. Bring that left knee with you. Nice long inhale. Fly the left leg back. Find airplane pose. Stay here. Maybe find a bind, interlacing your hands if you like. Reach the crown of the head away from your tailbone. Lift nice and high right where you are. Breathe in. Back to single-legged mountain. Bring that left knee to your chest as you exhale. Hold it here, breath in. And then we're gonna find eagle pose. Wrap left leg over, left arm under. If eagle arms aren't your jam, no problem. Keep that left arm under and bring your hands to your opposite shoulders. See if you can stretch and broaden across the shoulder blades. If you've got the eagle bind, pull the elbows up and away from you. Pull the fingertips up and away from you. Feel the stretch in your upper back, breathe in. 
big breath out. Maybe you sit a little lower. The next place we're going is dancer. Unwind, catch the inside of your left foot and then start to kick in to your left hand with your left foot. Find a little bit more space in the lower back. So you can come out of that back bend variation, tuck the tail and then take it back in with a bit more integrity. We're always trying to find that challenge, but in a way that we feel supported, right? So that we're always, always growing. We're part of nature. Nature's always growing. But we want to push ourselves with love, push ourselves with all the resources that we need so that we're growing in a way that's sustainable. Nice big breath in. We're slowly going to find Malasana. Take a big step with your left foot, heels in, toes out, and then send your butt back and down. And a little length in your spine. Might feel good to shift the weight side to side or close your eyes. Just notice how your body feels here. From Malasana, tuck the tailbone a little bit under. Start to round your spine, reach your arms forward. Shoulders are moving toward your ears. You're slowly, if you can, gonna set your butt all the way down, bring your hands back behind you, and then plant the feet, scooch back onto your mat a little bit, palms back behind you, plant the feet down, and I'll lift up into a reverse table here. Squeeze through your thighs and your glutes, press your feet down into the mat, big breath in, and then lower the hips, all the way back between your thumbs, round your spine, catch the opposite shins here, for a seated child's pose, my voice is probably really muffled there, but let your head drop down between your knees. Notice what you feel in your spine here. So there's lots of data after some of those back bends. You breathe some nourishment, breathe some prana, breathe some good energy into anywhere in your body that maybe needs it. And then bring your head back up, bring your hands back behind you. Again, reverse tabletop option. This time, if you want to straighten out the legs, try and press through the entire sole of your foot if you can. It'd be really tough to get the toes down. Play around with it, do your best. Big breath in. We're gonna send the hips all the way back between the thumbs and then fold forward over your legs. You can bend your knees as much as you need to make this accessible, to make this feel satisfying. Three deep breaths. You soften the jaw. One more here, soften your shoulders. Lift your head, cross your ankles, bend your hands, and then downward facing dog. All right, we've got the left leg. Inhale it up. Bend your knee, externally opening the hips. Stay or flip your dog. If you flip over, remember you're shifting forward a little bit, tucking that bottom shoulder underneath you onto the back of your ribs, long through the neck. Breathe in. Bring the left hand down as you exhale. Left leg kicks back. Breath in. Step between your thumbs, inhale, lift your left arm open. Three times, option, elbow to knee under your body. Big breath to peel open. Follow the left hand, exhale, squeeze with your eyes. Again, breathe in, breathe out. And drag and fly on the in breath. Shiva squat, frame your left foot and then bring your right knee to your calf. And a little length in your spine here. You can absolutely challenge the balance by bringing the hands to the heart. When you're ready, bring that right knee up to your chest. Reach the fingertips up. Find your balance on the in-breath and then fly it back into airplane. Stay or bind the hands. Another nice variation in airplane to open the chest is to take a T shape with your arms or a W shape with your arms. So notice what gives you the best access to drawing those shoulder blades down your back to broadening across the collarbones and the upper ribs. We're gonna take it back to that single-legged mountain. Reach your knee up, reach your arms up on an in-breath. 
And then eagle, right leg over, right arm comes under. You can catch opposite shoulders or you can hug the forearms and the hands together. Set the eyes, the drishti to one spot. Every inhale, breathing a little bit lower into your spine. Every exhale, sitting a little bit deeper into your legs. Squeeze the thighs together. Come back to single-legged, or actually we're going into dancer, right? So unwind, catch your right foot. No need to take single-legged on the way unless you want to. And then start to kick into that hand with your foot. Focus on the stretch around the right underarm and the right side of your chest, if you can find it. Big, big breath in. Malasana at the top of your mat, hands to your heart. Hips sink down toward the mat. Stay here, press your elbows into your thighs, breathe in. Push your thighs back into your elbows as you exhale, find more length in your spine. Start to round the spine. Send your butt back as you reach your arms forward for a little counterbalance. And then hips are going to drop all the way down. Bring your hands back behind you. Scooch back onto your mat. Lift up into reverse table. Push your feet down. Lift the hips up. And then we're going to slide the hips back between the thumbs. Straighten the legs out and fold forward. All right, bring the hands back. This time, we're gonna come into a tabletop position with the knees. Bring your right hand to the back of your head. We're gonna straighten out the right leg. Bring your right knee to your left elbow. Keep your left hand where it is. Bring your chest back through center, just switch legs. Switch legs, right elbow, left knee. Chest to center, pull the right knee in. Switch legs, right elbow to left knee. Chest to center, bring the right knee in. Keep going, so we're just staying on that same side with the twist, but we're pedaling the legs. As you bring the right knee in, lean back a little bit. As you bring the left knee in, you're squeezing up, bringing that right knee to elbow for three. Good, two. Last one on this side, elbow to knee. Bring your knees into your chest, bring your hands to the back of the head, round your spine. So see if you can bring your elbows outside of your knees, finding your balance here. Great, keep the left elbow, bring the right forearm back behind you, straighten the left leg, right knee bends, left elbow, right knee. Bring your chest through center as you bring that left knee in and lean back a little bit. Over the left elbow, right knee, lean it back, left knee comes in, left to the right, Lean it back, left knee comes in for five, four. Bicycle crunches are an option if this is overthinking it for you. Last two, last one. Cross your ankles, plant your hands, downward facing dog. All right, we're gonna put that together. One breath, one motion, adding some pieces back in. Right leg lifts on an in breath. Bend your knee externally, open, stay or flip. Big breath in as you open. Right hand comes back down as you empty. Right leg kicks back, breathe in. Step between your thumbs as you breathe out. Peel that right arm up on the in breath. Stay here or elbow to knee as you exhale. Two more like that, breathe in. Breathe out. In, elbow to knee on the out. Back to dragonfly on the in breath. Prasarita this time, alternating tapping either ankle for a three, for a two, for a one, pivot to the top of the mat. This time we're gonna find wild thing. Pivot onto the knife edge of your left foot, right toes come back behind you, press the floor away, lift your hips, lift your heart, breathe in. Bring that right hand down, right knee, right elbow as you empty two more wild things. You can hold your wild thing if you'd prefer. Inhale, open. Exhale, right hand down, right knee, right elbow. Last time, breathe in, open. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Kick it back to three-legged dog on the in-breath. 
Step both of your feet to the top of the mat, feet close together this time. Halfway stretch, full breath in. Forward fold and empty it out. Rise all the way on the in breath. Bend your elbows as you exhale, strong legs. Interlace at your lower back. Take a breath and lift the chin. And then bow forward as you empty it out. Release your bind. Halfway lift on an in breath. Plant the hands, step or hop it back. We'll meet in downward facing dog. One side to go of that flow. Left leg lifts, breathe in. Bend your knee, stay or flip it. Inhale. If you flipped, exhale, left hand comes back down. Left knee pulls in, kick back on an in breath. Step forward as you empty left arm, dragonfly, breathe it open. Three times, elbow to knee, or you hold that dragonfly. Inhale. Exhale. Big breath. Squeeze it in. Back to dragonfly on the in-breath. Cross or read a ragdoll or alternate ankle taps. Let your head drop. Let go of some of the control. Find that flow of momentum, of energy. So important that you feel like you're choosing this. Three, two, one. One, hands to the top, wild thing. Left toes come back behind you. Press into your right hand, big breath in. Left hand down, left knee, left elbow as you exhale. Wild thing, two more times, breathe in. Left hand down, knee to elbow, breathe out. Abdominals pull in. One more like that, inhale. Exhale, knee to elbow, three-legged dog, take a breath in. This time, Malasana at the top of the mat, feet wide, hands to your heart. Close the eyes down, take a couple deep reflection breaths, deep cleansing breaths. Reach your arms forward, blink your eyes open, round your spine, and then drop your hips down. Bring your hands back behind you. Scoot your hips back, either straight leg reverse table or bent knee reverse table. Nice deep breath in. Lower your hips, fold forward as you empty. I'm gonna bind my big toes here. Not the biggest forward fold ever, but just a counter stretch before we take it into our final peak pose, our wheel option here. When you're ready, start to lift the head and the neck up. You're gonna slide the feet down, scoot your butt forward, and then lower down onto your back. For a moment, just breathe. Maybe take a um, knees dipping in. I'm blanking on the name of this one here. Maybe anything that feels like a release in your low back. For wheel, we're gonna start by coming into bridge. So we did bridge right at the beginning of the practice. Start by bringing your feet down and then close up any space between your lower back and the mat. Your tailbone might leave the mat. Some of your glutes might start to lift, but can you take any of the gap between around your kidneys and your adrenals and your bottom ribs and the mat and close that down so no lights getting through. Keep that alignment in your pelvis and your spine as you start to lift the hips. So you're coming into your bridge. From bridge pose, you can bring your hands back behind you with your fingertips pointing forward and your palms down underneath your shoulders. You might stay right here. It's a great place to kind of prep. You might also choose to lift up onto the crown of the head. Do a little check-in with yourself there. Be really honest with how your body's feeling. See if you can take some of the weight out of the head. Maybe you just hover the head. Some of you might feel good straightening the arms all the way out. And you might pause at the top and then lower back down nice and easy. Lowering back to bridge and lowering back to your mat. So we're gonna take a little bit of time to play with that. If that felt accessible for you, go ahead and keep working on that. For those of you that are working on wheel and it's just not happening, Chakrasana, I want you to go ahead and stand all the way up and walk over to a wall space. You're gonna bring your butt and your shoulders onto that wall space for a moment and then start to walk the feet forward. Lift your hips away from the wall. 
Find that tuck of the tailbone so you're not arching your lower back here. You've tucked the tailbone under. From here, strong legs. Bring your hands back behind you, same placement. Palms face down underneath your shoulders and then start to press into the wall as much as you feel like you can or as much as you feel like a sense of resource for. Feel free to adjust your feet. Maybe you start to walk the feet a little farther forward. Lift the chest. And play around a little bit with that. Gradually, you might walk the hands farther down the wall. This can be tougher, actually, than a regular wheel in terms of keeping your balance. When you're ready, lower the shoulders, walk the feet back in, and then bring the hips back to the wall. So find a lot of length in the spine, just standing tall here, breathing. Breathe out. One more like that. We're going to bring the hands back behind the shoulders. Palms are pressed against the wall. Lift the hips away from the wall. Start to push the arms into the wall. Squeeze the thighs together. Maybe you drop your head. Maybe you straighten the arms. Maybe you walk the legs forward to give yourself a little bit less of an angle here. When you're ready to come out, bring the head back to the wall, shoulders back to the wall, feet back a little closer, bring your hips back to the wall, stand up nice and tall, big breath in, long breath out. All right, great work. If you were working on wheel on your back, I'll offer one more option here. So from bridge pose, actually let's all start in camel. So come back to the hands and the knees and then back to standing on your knees. Tuck your toes under if you want a little bit more support. Find some length in your lower back, tailbone tucks. And then shrug the shoulders toward the ears. Take a breath in. As you exhale, roll the shoulders back, take it back. From camel, this is a great place to stay. If you want more, untuck the toes. And then one arm at a time, you're gonna reach back, find the floor behind you. It's called Kapotasana. And then maybe, maybe, maybe for some of you, you'll come onto your forearms, bringing your head between your feet. So this is not a beginner level back bend. It can be an interesting one to explore if wheel has come easy to you and you've been practicing wheel for a little while. Breathe wherever you landed, listen to your body. And then when you're ready to come out, one hand at a time comes back up. Maybe bring the hands to the hips. If you're in camel, bring your hands to your hips, come upright. And then lower hips to heels. Seated meditation for a moment. You sit up really tall in your spine. So find neutral. Keep the heart lifted. Notice where those back bends, really invigorating practice. Notice where it's landing in your body. And breathe in a way that helps you send some attention, some prana, some fresh oxygen and energy into anywhere in the body that we really leaned into and relied upon. After all of those back bends, really important that we take a couple forward folds. So I'm going to choose half pigeon. You can always choose child's pose or that straight leg forward fold. If you're taking half pigeon with me, you can come onto the palms of the hands and then slide your right knee forward, stretch your left leg back. You might take a moment with the spine kind of in neutral here when you're ready and you start to walk the arms forward. Maybe stack the forearms to make a pillow for your forehead. And let your practice start to settle. For me, it's really key that this practice feels like a friendly space for my body and my mind to turn to. And that means that from day to day, 
it looks a little different from day to day. Maybe some days I have a lot of energy and my body just feels really healthy and vibrant and I can push and challenge and find those edgy spots. And other days, it's just not quite, quite the vibe. And on those days, I still wanna be able to turn to this practice. So I have to move through it day to day in a way that feels supportive, feels aligned. So a gentle consistency with a practice like this is gonna over time yield way more than showing up on your mat and going, you know, really intensely into some of these shapes that maybe your body is trying to tell you to slow down around and doing that maybe once a week or once a month and then feeling just so beat that there's a hesitation to come back. It's being so gentle with yourself about however your practice unfolded. None of us are gonna do it perfectly all of the time. But the key is to keep an open mind and to keep learning from the experience that we have, learning from the growth, learning from the back steps that we inevitably end up experiencing. And half pigeon, start to walk your hands back a little bit and lift the chest. Let's bring both legs around to the top of the mat. Butterfly your legs for a moment. Keep your hands back behind you and then just pulse the knees gently, not pushing. Breathe in, breathe out. And then find half pigeon on the left. You can either transition right into it or come back to hands and knees. So however your practice looked, to see if starting right now from this moment, from this breath, for at least the rest of your yoga practice today, but perhaps even trying to carry this intention with you into the rest of your day, choosing to move in a way that is supportive, that supports your growth, but also supports and accepts where you are today. It's so easy to get fixated on where we want to be, where we're going. Maybe we lose sight of the gift of where we are right now. Right? These sensations, this version of your body, these current circumstances of your life, for better, for not so good, the very least, can you breathe in a way that allows you to be as present as possible for the last few moments of class? without any rush. And start to lift yourself up. And bring your right leg around to the top of the mat. And bring both knees into your chest, round your spine a little bit here. And then gradually start to work your way into Shavasana. So coming full circle, maybe bring the knees into the chest first and take a spinal twist. Maybe just a massage for the lower back. As you feel ready, coming into a resting shape, you could always choose to take Shavasana on your belly or to take legs up the wall or to lie on your side. As you land, inviting some stillness as a way to help your body soak up this practice, as a way for your nervous system 
to move into a space that feels a little bit more regulated. And stay here. Listen for my voice in just a few moments to close today's practice. Or if you happen to have more time, feel free to log off or shut off the recording. And soak here for as long as you like. When you're ready to move on, do some gentle movement into your body, maybe nod the head slowly side to side, open and close your hands, curl and uncurl your toes. And then in whatever way makes the most sense for you, transition from your resting shape to a seat if you're not already there. Stay here taking just one more breath together. So from your seated position, release your arms to your side. And then on an inhale, reach the arms out and then up, gathering up some of that good energy. Stretch a little bit taller. Finish that inhale. Sip in more air at the top. Hold. And then let it go. Bring your hands to your heart. Thank you for sharing some of your energy, some of your time. Take good care of you and your spine. Back bends can be really awesome for us, but we want to dose them appropriately. So um, I hope to see you again real soon.